What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George and in this video I want to be talking about what you should automate as an agency owner. No, I don't waste no time. So guys, welcome back to the video and like I said in the introduction, today we're going to be talking about what as an agency owner you should be automating. And the reason why I'm recording this video is because we are currently building out a white label service for those that enroll into the coaching program. So for those of you that don't know, I have my own program where I basically teach you guys on how to start your own social media marketing agency, how to get your first clients, how to pitch your services, how to get results for this client, how to automate the agency, build it up and scale it so that you two can live life on your own terms. And one of the questions that I quite often get is what should I do in terms of the outsourcing of the Facebook ad side of things? You know, do I need to buy a media buyer? Um, how do I go about hiring a media buyer? How do I know if this person is getting results or not? And so on and so forth. And a quick backstory to me, uh, when I first started out, well, when I first sort of got going and, you know, momentum was on my side, etc., we, we scaled the agency to six figures. From there, we basically, the whole mindset that we had basically was to automate as much as possible, outsource as much as possible so that we could, you know, live the laptop lifestyle and basically work, uh, you know, the, the least amount of time on the agency as physically possible. And we used to, because bear in mind, like Bradley and I both had about like let's say on a scale of one to ten maybe a three to four in terms of um knowledge on facebook ads like we sort of knew okay you know this is what you need to do this is what kind of campaign you need to set up etc and that was about it like the, the inner sentence of facebook we had no idea about because we'd never actually ran ads ourselves we used to always um get a team to do this for us and we, we had two to three media buyers on standby at all times then as soon as a client came in we would check, okay, what niche is this client in? Because back then we didn't really have a niche. We literally just took any client that came our way, we, we took them on. And then we'd basically look at the niche and then decide from there, okay, which of our three media buyers um, you know, would basically get the gig. And we'd base that on the retainer as well as the niche. So for example, if we had a quite a large um, retainer come in, then we'd maybe opt for the more expensive uh, and slightly better media buyer. If we had a small retainer, then we'd go for the cheaper option, um, even though the results might not be that good. And we would then, because um, these media buyers didn't um, stay in contact with the clients. We did the, 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 the contact and the communication because we were under the impression that, okay, if we allow this media buyer who was working for a fraction of the price, talk to the agency owner, you know, there might be something there where the agency owner mentions the retainer or the media buyer mentions that he actually does not work for the agency, but that he's a freelancer and, you know, we'll end up getting burnt and maybe the, the media buyer would end up working directly with the client and just cut us out as middlemen. And because of that fear, we basically did all the communication. So if a client says that he or she was unhappy with the results, we would then message the media buyer saying, okay, what is currently going on and what can we do to improve it? Then we would hop on a call and just regurgitate what that media buyer said. No idea if it was true or not, no idea if those were the right metrics, etc. We were just literally reliant on the media buyer. Why? Because we had no idea if it was, you know, basically if we were doing a good job or not. We didn't know what to look at. And there's been times where um, so one of our media buyers was quite introverted and that was also the reason why he was a freelance media buyer in the first place because he didn't like the sales aspect. Um, so, you know, I agreed to do all the communication and there was one time where he didn't actually reply to my messages for like a good two, three days. And I had that call with the client and I had no idea um, what to say because I didn't know what was going on. So I thought, okay, I'll look into the business manager. I'll try and work out what we are currently working on what is currently you know basically set up and what we can do to improve it and i was looking at the settings and i honestly had no idea you know what what was good and what what wasn't you know i didn't know if the click through rate was okay i didn't know what the ratio was from view content to add to cart i didn't know if the return on ad spend was good i didn't even know the profit margin of the clients like honestly um, and obviously, you know, this was back when we just started out and things have, you know, massively changed. Uh, for those that don't know, I actually run all of the ads myself. Um, me and my head of operations, Elliot, we do all of the uh, media buying, etc., for our clients. Why? Because I have yet, because now, obviously, you know, I've learned the hard way that I need to have adequate, you know, an adequate amount of knowledge on Facebook ads. And then I actually got the hang of it. 
I started learning more about it, got some coaching on the side as well, because even though I'm a coach, you know, there's still so many things that I want to learn. So I'll get coaches myself to, you know, to basically, so they can teach me, you know, what they know, etc. And then obviously, you know, we had that big client back at the end of 2019, where I did all the media buying as well, uh, along with Colin Dice, learned a lot from him as well. Um, so it was really good to actually work alongside him um, in terms of the media buying, just to see um, from his perspective, you know, what, what metrics to look at, etc. So now we actually run of all of the uh, media buying or, you know, ourselves for our clients. And I've yet to actually find, because obviously, um, as I always preach on this channel, you know, the goal is to work on the business, not in the business. But I've actually yet to find someone, um, a media buyer, that is as good as me, if not better, um, you know, under a relatively reasonable price point, whereas, you know, we still keep a profit margin. And that is the thing with media buying. You know, if you want good results, you're going to have to pay up because media buyers that are highly skilled, they know what they're worth and they know how much they can charge because it is all value-based pricing. So um, with that in mind, you know, the question obviously arises, should you outsource the media buying? Now, me, uh, guru number one will basically say, well, no, you should be working on the business. Um, or, you know, he'll say, yes, you should be working on the business. Outsource everything to contractors because they know it better than you. And then you've also got guru number two, which is sort of like the bracket that I fall into that basically says, you know, you do need an adequate amount of knowledge on Facebook ads to know what is going on. And you should be able to run it yourself at the very least in some capacity you know so if your media buyer is sick if your media buyer doesn't reply or just in general you know just to see what the media buyer is doing because that is one of the biggest mistakes that i made when starting out is i had no idea if the media buyer was actually doing a good job i didn't know if we were getting results for the clients or not because i just had no idea i didn't know what the business manager you know i didn't know all the columns and the settings etc and now if we were actually to hire another media buyer hire a contractor to do the ads for us I'd know exactly at what point he is effing up and what at what point he is making a mistake or vice versa, at what point he is actually doing a good job and we can scale. And it'll probably be a much better experience if we had a media buyer, um, not necessarily to outsource the work to, but just to basically take it off my hands. And that might be even the next step, you know, with the agency. So um, I basically tell the media buyer what to do rather than ad you know asking him, can he take over this? I'll say, okay, for today's campaign, we're gonna set up a middle of funnel campaign, retargeting website visitors and people that have engaged with Facebook. Can you please set this up with the best convert converting uh, image so far and the best converting copy or a testimonial uh, from those that um, have already purchased, something like that. And then the media buyer goes and actually sets that up. You know, that might be the next step for us. But Anyway, back to the video, what should you outsource if not media buying uh, directly? So like I said, I'm not saying you should not outsource the media buying, but you should know and understand what is going on and you should have an adequate amount of knowledge on Facebook ads or Google ads, depending on what you offer as a service before you start outsourcing. So you know if the person is doing a good job or not. And when you actually do start to outsource the media buying, you can see as well, you know, if he shows you results, you can see if it's actually impressive or not. Like we used to get impressed by um, like 10,000 page likes for 50 cents a page like or something like that when, you know, that had nothing to do with econ, but because we thought, oh, 10,000 page likes, that's amazing. And we used to like list you hire people based on metrics like that. But anyway, so what should you actually outsource as an agency owner? And I'm going to give you some examples from my perspective. And um, if, you know, that is something that you offer, that is something that I would outsource as well, okay? So the first thing, again, this is something that we do not offer, but something that if we were to offer and we have offered in the past, which is, you know, social media management, that is something that I would 100% outsource because it's so tedious. It's, you know, it's easy also to um, get someone else to do it for very cheap. When we do, did social media management, we had a really good graphic designer for $100 a month per client. He used to provide us with 30 posts, 30 pieces of copy, and he used to also schedule it in Hootsuite as well. So 100% um, outsource the social media management slash graphic design part of things because as an agency owner, there's too many variables involved and you just don't want to be doing all that yourself. I, uh, My very, very, very first client for social media management, I did this all myself. It took me about four to five hours to you know, basically set up all of these images, uh, make them all in Canva and Photoshop, etc. And I just hated every minute of it. And looking back, if I could outsource that for $100, I would be happy to do so. So again, social media management is something that I would 100% uh, outsource. And then if the scheduling of the posts is not part of that, then I'll outsource that as well. Or if you have a client that actually provides you with posts 
um, for you to schedule, then just outsource the scheduling part. Even though yeah, Hootsuite is automated and you know later.com is uh, automated, etc. The scheduling of those posts and connecting the Facebook pages and writing out the copy and making sure that the hashtags go on the Instagram post and the Facebook uh, image is slightly bigger, etc. That is very tedious and even that is something that you should outsource as well. And this is something that you can easily outsource for anywhere from 15 to $30 a month. Okay, so social media management and then obviously the scheduling of the post should both be outsourced. Then if you are using freelancer websites um, to find leads and or clients, then the outreach on those freelancer websites and or send them proposals to these clients is something that you should outsource as well. And again, when we were using Upwork as our main platform for um, you know, lead sourcing and, and getting clients, we outsourced you know, all of that. So we had a um, basically just a VA log into our Upwork account, send out proposals, reply to the messages, and then basically send our Calendly link over. As soon as that um, potential client you know, re replied and scheduled according to the Calendly link, I would take over or Bradley would take over you know, who I was working with at the time. So that whole sort of outreach method was automated and systemized because we didn't have to do it and i think we i think it was 30 dollars per account per month that was done by this va and she would literally spend an hour a day on our account so like three dollars an hour basically um sending out proposals buying connects if we let her um and just you know reaching out to potential clients or clients that are in the you know uh, on the lookout for a social media marketer i just want to quickly interrupt this video and basically mention to you guys that i have a free social media marketing course and you can literally download this course if you are subscribed to my youtube channel so basically what i've done is i have created a custom audience with google ads uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and you guys will see a pre-roll advertisement on one of my videos where i basically give you the direct link to download this course so it's an unpublished link on teachable which you will only see if you are subscribed to my channel so if you want a free social media marketing course all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and then you will see my advertisements so without further ado let's hop back into the video another thing that um is something that we do not offer but it is something that we get inquiries about quite often is comment monitoring and yes for some of the larger clients uh, we'll set up block lists to make sure that any negative comments will just be erased and moved out um, and then for example when we had the office we actually had someone there who was from i think she was from greece and basically she did all the comment monitoring uh, she would remove all of the negative comments from all of that clients um you know facebook advertisements etc so the comments under the ads uh, is something that I would 100% outsource. And this can be literally done by a VA in a third world country for a dollar an hour. It doesn't take too long. It's just a, it's just tedious. It's something that you shouldn't be spending or wasting your time and energy on. And if you can outsource something for $30 a month, then I would 100% do it because like I said, it just saves you an hour a day. Then speaking of cheap third world um, virtual assistants, another thing that I would 100% outsource is data mining. So generating email addresses, generating phone numbers um scraping um i don't know scraping like networks and data lists off of um the you know off, off the internet of google etc data mining should also be outsourced and this can be done day cheap as well i think our data miner charges i think it was like eight dollars for like 150 leads or something like that so you'll literally provide with a, uh, an excel sheet of the name of the owner of the company, his personal email address, so no info at anything like that, um, the name of the company, the Facebook page of the company, the email address, and if that company has got a pixel uh, on the website, yes or no. And of course, you know, you've got data mining softwares, etc., out there. But a lot of the data mining softwares that I've used in the past um, are either more expensive than that, or the uh, the data that you get scraped off those um, you know, softwares is old or the emails bounce etc so our data miner is actually providing a better job for that so data mining should also be outsourced okay and then to sort of speed up the rest of this video another thing that i would outsource as well is email outreach if you have not got um some kind of software to send out personalized outreach blasts if you haven't got the hybrid outreach system that we promote in the course then i would definitely find someone a virtual assistant to do the email outreach on your behalf another thing i would also 100 percent uh basically automate or outsource is the follow-ups and appointment setting 
uh, for your client. So as I mentioned with that Upwork uh, virtual assistant, make sure that someone is doing the follow-up. So if you do the outreach blast or if you've got a virtual assistant doing the outreach blast, make sure you've also got someone that is replying to those that have replied to the blast and make sure that that person sends your Calendly link, etc., so that you can, all you need to do basically is take those calls. Then if you do funnel building for your clients, then that again, that is something that you can also outsource. We do that in-house. No, so either me or uh, my head of operations will do this. But uh, funnel building, again, is something that it, it's it's not rocket science, okay? So if you've got a template, if you've got um, funnels that convert well, then all that person needs to do is just copy and paste what works or duplicate the funnel and change the wording around, etc. Something, again, that you can outsource or automate as much as possible. And then lastly, uh, something that I also automate, which is not really not really relevant to uh, SRMA, but I have a content calendar for YouTube. So literally, a visual assistant will just literally uh, give me an entire calendar of videos that I need to to record and then from there I send that video off um, to that same person and basically that person will uh, chop up the, the start and the end of the videos intro outro and then upload it to YouTube with you know they add like the tags and the thumbnail etc um, there's been times where I've done this myself there's been times where I've only done like the content calendar I do the rest myself etc you know basically from like the last like two months it's just all been automated and it's just been a much easier um, way of recording content you know from that point onwards because all I need to worry about is recording the video videos and then from there everything everything else is automated and outsourced so that is all i've got for today hope you got something out of this video leave a comment down below what else uh, you think should be outsourced or if you outsource something that i have not mentioned in this video leave a comment down below and also leave this video with a thumbs up if you got some out of it subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video